you will you'll receive that recording either later on this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Attached to that recording is a questionnaire that we just ask that you, you please fill that out. It should take you no more than two minutes, but we, we value your feedback. So we wanna make sure that we're getting that. And then obviously the recording will be attached to that uh, so that you can go in and, and reference anything that's covered today. Um, the chat is open. So if you do have questions, feel free to post those in the chat or uh, at the end of the presentation, we will have a designated Q&A. So you will have the opportunity to take yourself off of mute and, and ask any questions that you might have. Uh, but just know that the chat, that chat feature is open. I would recommend saving some of those questions to the end though. Uh, it's just hard to, to present and answer questions as we're, as we're going along. So if you do have questions, jot them down, or if you wanna post them into the chat and then we can go back and revisit those once, uh, once we're in in that Q&A portion, uh, we, can, we can address those then. Um, my name is RJ Panessi. I, I work here at WGU in our Career and Professional Development Office. Uh, and today we, we have a great presentation. Uh, Steve Harrington from The Ohio State University is here to, to present to you all. Uh, so Steve, I'm gonna pass it off to you. Uh, if you wanna start the presentation, introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Yeah, thank you so much for having me today and for you guys joining. Um, let me share my screen real quick and then we'll we'll get started here. Make sure you can see this okay. Good. And RJ, is it showing the actual screen or is it showing my my version of it? Uh, it's it's showing the screen, so you're good. Okay. Awesome. Um, again, so my name is Steve Harrington. A um, little bit about me, and if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, um, it's a great way to stay up to date with me, job postings, and whatever's going on at Ohio State. Not only you know this huge university and medical center campus, but um, also uh, with talent acquisition and what's going on. So um, that's in the top left corner. Um, it, I made a QR code there; it makes it a little bit um, easier to find me. Um, I work for talent acquisition in our center of expertise here within uh, the human resources department. Um, and I currently support the comprehensive cancer center. So um, that's really anything from research positions um, all the way through to our administrative type things within the CCC. Uh, and there's a lot of, within my area, there's a lot of employees. I think we have over a thousand um, just in this area. Um, total university, I think we're looking at over 40,000 employees. Um, and then I believe that includes the med center as well. So huge employer, a lot going on. And as you can imagine, we always need great people um, constantly. So a little bit more about us, um, for those of you that don't know as much about um, Ohio State. So, uh, you know, like I said, huge university, top 10 school. It's a big employer in Ohio. Uh, I don't, don't know how many of you are coming to us from Ohio or if you're remote in another state. Um, but really at Ohio State, we champion people and their potential through unrivaled experiences that connect expertise, ideas, and resources. Um, so we're a large community, um, and we really value on that community. Um, of course, Ohio State sports, um, you name it, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of there. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to move that out of the way there. Um, and then, you know, talking kind of more about careers. Um, and we put this picture here just because there's so much that goes on outside of or within that community, but outside of your uh, of a potential job. So the future is not only what you dream about, but it's also what you create. Um, so a lot of our employees here, they make, um, you know, lasting friendships uh, with their coworkers. Um, they get involved in volunteer activities outside and inside of Ohio State. Uh, we recently just had uh, something within HR, but also this opens up to the whole entire community where you can do volunteer events. Um, and of course, the, we support that going through and let people do that, you know, as, as one of their work days to kind of give back to the community. So, you know, exploring all kinds of different ways to dive in and contribute um, to that huge community, but also it's ever changing. Um, as you can imagine. So we have the med center, we have campus. So there's just always a lot going on here. Uh, talking more specific about those career opportunities and where we see them. So this is a huge list. I won't read them all to you, uh, but um, a couple examples that we have is our academic departments and centers. 
Uh, for example, we have like the College of Dentistry, um, the Fisher College of Business, um, Arts and Sciences, uh, Engineering. Um, there's a bunch within the academic side. And then our administrative side, um, you know, we have Student Life, Admin and Planning, um, the Office of Human Resources, Business and Finance. And then we have other centers too, like the one I support, the Comprehensive Cancer Center. Um, of course, the Wexner Medical Center is also part of that a huge employer. And then our athletics and uh, technology and di digital innovation. Uh, within that, some of our services are centralized. So, you know, when you're looking at jobs at Ohio State, you'll see some of that um, and you can kind of tell it's centralized, but also some of these areas also hire their own people. So, for example, um, business and finance, that is centralized finance jobs, finance center, things like that. But also the academic administrative departments also hire their own. Uh, so when you're looking at jobs, you might see one that's central. You might also see one that's posted by admin and planning or, you know, by the College of Vet Med. So it just a um, lot of career opportunities, not only in these areas, but also just centralized as well. So it really just depends on who you want to work for and what you want to support, or maybe you don't care. Maybe you just want to work for Ohio State. Um, also with our um, accolades, so Ohio State with here within Columbus, so for the 10th consecutive year, we were named uh, 614 Magazine's Columbus Best Top Employer. Um, so this is a special edition of the magazine that recognizes the very best that Columbus has to offer. Uh, so these reader voted awards named Ohio State as one of the best employers within Columbus. Um, and of course, you know, more than 500 employees. Uh, there's a little bit more about that if you want to read on 614 Magazine's website. Um, we also recently got the uh, Governor of Ohio's award as well. Um, so there's usually, a, you know, kind of speaks to the, the culture and, you know, working for Ohio State. A little bit about the hiring process. So, you know, when you go online to our career site and you look at jobs, um, when you go to apply, we use Workday, so it's pretty, pretty user friendly, but um, when you go through the process, um, you know, you submit your application, you create a portal so you can check on your application and things like that. Um, typically, we always review applications as recruiters. Uh, there are a bunch of us um, within Ohio State. So um, we look at those, you know, and, and make sure that um, we're creating a good fit, not only for you, but for whoever we're, uh, we're, we're posting that job for. Uh, phone screens, you can expect those in certain types of positions. Uh, there are other types of positions where it's just a manager review after a recruiter uh, review. So that's what that looks like. Um, once the manager gets it from us, they review that application. Um, they look kind of holistically at your resume. Um, so it's, you know, super important to upload resumes. Uh, I won't tell you a cover letter is required because that is um, definitely kind of, I feel like we're going away from that um, if you follow trending things on LinkedIn, but uh, it doesn't hurt. So um, especially if you want to tell a little bit about your, uh, a little bit more about your resume um, or maybe just um, some of the information's not in there, that's where it's really great to upload a cover letter. Um, and then uh, from there, the manager or the hiring team, a lot of uh, times there will be three or four people involved in the hiring process, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less, but they'll get together and make a decision whether to interview. Um, and then it just kind of goes from there. Our interview process, um, you know, I would say on average probably takes three to four weeks. It really just depends on the area and the job and how, how quick they're looking to fill that job. Um, but from there, you know, you can traditionally expect one to two interviews and then hopefully an offer after that. So it's kind of a typical process. Um, of course, we always have, you know, one offs and things like that where the process is super quick or maybe it's a little bit longer um, if, they're, if they're interviewing or hiring for multiple positions. Uh, a little bit more about um, the benefits at Ohio State. So this is one thing that I love to talk about just because the benefits are awesome. Um, and we did uh, put a link in there for you if you want to learn more. Um, the benefit site is very interactive on the HR website. Um, so we value work-life balance, um, you know, and I, I think when we say that we really mean it, you know, a lot of places, you know, will say, hey, we have a, we have, um, you know, great work-life balance, um, but we really mean that here. So uh, rarely do I ever work, you know, outside of, you know, that typical Monday through Friday schedule, or at least I try not to. Uh, but it's not expected at any point. So flexible and remote work arrangements were available, um, hybrid opportunities as well. We have a lot of that within the university. 
Um, they also support uh, well-being, and then we have access to athletic and cultural events as well. If you're a huge Ohio State uh, fan, as far as our sports go, you get discounted tickets as an employee. Um, I've never taken advantage of that personally myself, but um, I know a lot of people do, and, and there's some pretty good discounts involved. Um, for healthcare, we have a comprehensive we have comprehensive coverage and, and wellness programming that includes medical, dental, vision, and prescription coverage. Um, in my opinion, uh, benefits are excellent, deductibles are pretty low, costs are pretty fair, um, and then within that, everything always starts on day one. Um, so if you, if you were to come on board, you have benefits, you don't have to worry about waiting a period or anything like that. Uh, retirement is very competitive. So state, uh, we have the state retirement plan and alternative options as well that you can select from um, for being um, you know, a state employee. It goes through OPRS, which is the state retirement system here in Ohio. Um, and then we have other optional supplemental plans. What, one thing's really great about Ohio State is that currently we match 14%. Um, so that 14% is always going into whatever retirement plan you select. And then um, time off. So, you know, kind of depends on position, um, whether it's unclassified or a classified position. Um, maybe it's faculty um, that you're in, that you're interested in. So different time off plans, as you can imagine. Um, but all those vacation plans include that time off uh, to kind of rest and recharge. We also have sick time, of course, medical leaves um, when they're approved, short and long term disability options. We also have uh, paid parental leave. I think that's um, six weeks right now that you get um, as a new parent. And then we also have um, financial assistance as well. So tuition assistance for employees um, and their dependents, um, that also includes adoption assistance and homeownership incentives. Um, so the tuition assistance sometimes can be uh, kind of a win in its own, especially if you depend on uh, furthering your education. And then lifestyle and family. So these are newer benefits for us for 2023. So we have lifestyle spending accounts now uh, that really anything that you can be reimbursed on that supplements your lifestyle. So um, you can get up to $500 back a year. It's $125 per quarter. Save your receipts. Um, but those, um, it really is anything. So it goes from, you know, gym memberships to um, those uh, delivery meal plans um, for, for busy families. So there's so many things within the categories. Um, that they'll re re reimburse you for. And it's essentially, it's easy to take advantage of it. It's a free $500 back. So that's a great new benefit that they introduced to um, Ohio State this year. And we also have family care support options. So there's concierge options there, backup care. So for your child, or maybe you have an elderly parent you're taking care of, or whatever it may be. There is backup care options should your primary care kind of fall through. Um, I think that's hosted through Bright Horizons. It's available on our HR website as well. There's a lot of information about that new benefit there. Uh, we threw a QR code on here um, just in case you want to visit our career website. If you scan that QR code, it will take you straight to hr.osu.edu slash careers. It should land you right on the Workday page where I believe over 2,000 opportunities exist right now. Um, so a lot, like I said, a lot of opportunities. Um, there's probably, I know we kind of um, said business and health sciences on here. That was an easy way to kind of invite everyone. But uh, to be honest, there's a lot of opportunities in a lot of different areas. We did highlight some job opportunities as well. Um, these are ones that um, maybe are more difficult to fill or we're just looking for the right candidate. Um, you'll see on here that, and I know we probably have a wide variety of people um, that, that will visit this call, but we have opportunities available for new grads. Um, so, you know, maybe you just graduated from, um, you know, the business uh, side of WGU, or you're going to graduate soon, um, or maybe you're alumni like I am of WGU and you, um, you know, are looking for an experience job. You've already got some experience behind you. Um, there is several of those here. Um, you'll see that some of them are kind of related to finance we, uh, with that business route. Um, and then the next one here, um, some things with grants and biostats. So, like I said, early career experience levels, um, just a few here to highlight, but you'll see that on our career site. Um, a lot of times, too, when you're applying for jobs, so you'll look, it'll actually have the career level on there so you kind of know where you're coming in at. 
um, but always happy to help um, anyone that's going through the application process or maybe has applied and just wants to know more about where it is in the career bands. Um, we have a huge initiative called Career Roadmap. Um, there is more information on the HR website about that as well. I won't get too, too, de too detailed um, with that, but um, it is a very defined process in order to establish career levels and really help our current employees, but also our future our applicants and future employees kind of know where they exist on that level um, span and what type of career opportunities are out there. So by looking at that and the framework we have built for that, um, you kind of know where you can go even before you work here, um, which is really great to kind of plan out your career and, you know, what's the next five years type of thing look like for you. So I think that pretty much wraps up what I have um, as far as um, what we wanted to present today. Um, I did put my contact information on here, so you already have the LinkedIn, but also my email. Please feel free to email me at any time if you have questions about the application process or any jobs that you've applied to. Um, I did also put Kim and Dylan's information on here as well. Unfortunately, they were not able to join us today, um, but I did leave that on there in case you would like to reach out to them with questions as well. As people are, are thinking of questions, uh, you can either take yourself off mute or post those into the chat. Um, I did have a question, Steve, uh, just to start off as, as people are thinking about what, what questions they might want to ask. Um, as individuals are applying for positions, uh, do you have specific things that you look for that really have candidates stand out as they're going through the application process? Is there anything people can do in particular uh, to really catch the eye of those, of those individuals that are reviewing? viewing the applications, what, what recommendations might you have for that? So I would say, you know, probably the biggest thing that I look for when I review a candidate profile is, you know, really consistency and just making sure they're filled out um, fully. The resumes look great. Um, of course, not everyone's a writing expert. We realize that. Um, but really, you know, when you're applying for jobs, just proofreading. Um, and the reason why I say that is we're not the only people that see these, you know, once we pass them on, we have, you know, depending on who the hiring manager is, you might have a director or a vice president, whoever that is looking at your resume. So really, you know, just um, making sure you're proofreading the resumes and you have the relevant information in there towards that job. So. For example, if you're applying for a mid-career finance job, then you really want to make sure your resume speaks to your financial experience. Um, and that's where sometimes adding a cover letter is great. Um, less is more with cover letters. You don't have to write a two or three page cover letter. Um, but for those of you that uh, do like to add that, it's great. Um, I like when they address us. Um, so a lot of times we'll get a, you know, dear recruiter or hiring manager. Um, it just um, sometimes to me, it um, is a little bit more information for us, but also it just kind of sets you apart uh, from sometimes from other people that don't upload cover letters. And sometimes, too, when we're looking at resumes, some people write them and they're really great and they have a lot of detail in them, um, but then sometimes they're not. They're very vague. So that's where if your resume is like that or maybe you just have so much information, you're trying to keep it on a page or two. Um, then that's a, another great time to add a cover letter as a separate attachment. Thank you. We did have some questions in the chat. Uh, first one from Jamie, uh, are, are most of these on site or are there any remote opportunities? So it really depends on what you're wanting to do in the location. Um, several of our jobs are remote um, that are uh, business bound. I want to say we looked the other day when we were um, talking about remote opportunities. I believe there were about 200 um, remote opportunities or somewhere on there. Of course, that changes daily based on new jobs and things like that that are coming down. Um, I would say the majority of them are probably hybrid um, or in person. But like I said, it really just depends on what type of work you're looking for. Um, if you're in a business position, that's where we'll see the the most remote opportunities. Of course, if you're on here and you're a nurse, um, those are probably going to be more few and far between. And one thing I will say too, um, when you look for the when you're on a job site, a lot of times it will have um, in the job description whether it's hybrid or remote. If they don't put that in there, um, you'll see a location and it'll say that this job is in a remote location. Those jobs are 100% remote. 
Um, so sometimes they don't put them in the job description, but that's a good indicator that it's stri uh, strictly remote. Beth had a question uh, in particular uh, on resume. Uh, I've been self-employed since 2017. Is it recommended to go into detail about that or just focus on previous career experience? Uh, they were an engineer before uh, and, and they end up at three pages long with, with everything included. So I would say to, um, and here specifically at Ohio State, this may be different than um, a traditional corporation, but uh, I would say that um, to prepare a short and a long resume, um, and that may help you in other job searches as well, but um, short resume, I would say, you know, maybe go back 10 years. I would put on there um, that you are self-employed and, and kind of um, what that's in. So, you know, if you were in engineering before and you're still doing something relevant to that, then I would definitely highlight that. That gives you more years of experience, but maybe it's something completely different and you own your own business now. Um, that can also, you know, we could take from that and say, okay, well, this person is running their own business. Again, depending on the job type of job you're applying for, uh, but I would definitely include that. You don't have to be really lengthy, but um, I would I would look to see, you know, okay, they've been um, self-employed since 2017, and this is what they're doing. Um, maybe a couple bullet points, um, high-level bullet points, but nothing that's going to really extend your resume out um, really long. And then um, something that we do here is we do a comprehensive look at your experience. So you know uh, that could go all the way back to you know, depending on your career level, back into the 1990s. Um, that's where I say to have that other piece of that prepared because we really want to make sure everyone is getting credit when they're offered a job for relevant experience. Um, we only see 10 years of, of work history on your resume that's relevant to the job you're applying for, then you may only get credit for that. So it's good to have both. And, and just to kind of piggyback off that, uh, Beth, here in, in our office in career and professional development, we do resume workshops. You can you can register for those same way that you registered for, for the event today, where we go over a lot of that stuff as far as some things to think about as you're building your resume. Um, Steve hit on a bunch of those different, those talking points that we, we usually recommend. Um, so something to, to consider moving forward as well. Does anybody else have questions? All right. Well, we will uh, we'll give you some time back in back in your day. Um, Steve shared, you know, the information as far as how you can connect with him. Um, obviously, being an alumni here of WGU, very helpful to have somebody like that in your corner as you're going through the the job search process. Uh, but Steve, I, I thank you for for jumping on, joining us, sharing about the opportunities at, at Ohio State. Uh, we we very much appreciate that, uh, and and uh, thank you again for for jumping in. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. All right, everyone, have a great rest of the day. Just a reminder that this was recorded. It will be sent out, so keep an eye out for that recording either later on this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Uh, all right, everyone, have a great rest of the day. Bye. Bye-bye.